greatly missed this year, the opportunity to congratulate those students who've been awarded prizes for progress and attainment. The COVID-19 precautions have made it impossible to get together this year. However, my congratulations are no less sincere for being delivered online as we celebrate the dedication and the hard work which your prize recognises. This year has been a unique year for reasons which we could not possibly have foreseen. The coronavirus arrived unexpected and uninvited and all the school's plans for this year were suddenly and almost overnight called into question. The school closed, except for children of key workers. The staff were fur furloughed, children were at home. But the school community responded magnificently. Very quickly, online learning was made available. And our thanks are due to members of staff who prepared it and to parents and carers who encouraged children to engage with it. So thank you. Thank you for your support for your children's learning in such challenging circumstances. And could I especially thank the head, Louise Salmon Smith, for her calm and sure-footed leadership of the school through these turbulent times. Her determination that good education should continue to be provided throughout lockdown enabled the Prebendal School to be amongst the very best of schools in the quality of what was provided and we're very grateful to her for her leadership. And could I also thank my colleagues on the governing body. We have met a lot during the lockdown by Zoom to give our support to the school and to help to ensure that throughout the, the emergency the school has continued to flourish. And so to all those who take their leave from Prebendal today, this summer, staff and students, I'd like to thank you for all that you have given and for helping to make Prebendal the very special place that it is. You go with our thanks and our prayers for you and an invitation to come back and see us and let us know how you're getting on. But for now, thank you to you all. Thank you for the way that you've coped in these unprecedented times. Have a very good summer. Thank you very much indeed. Governors, parents, guests, teachers, and of course, pupils of the Prebendal School Welcome to our prize giving and leavers service. As I was writing this State of the Nation address, I couldn't help but marvel at all that has gone on and that has been achieved this year, despite such trying circumstances. If anything, I think we have achieved more than we might have otherwise. I always leave writing speeches until the last minute. This year has caught me by surprise because I have had to budget some time to write something in advance. I don't know about you, but for me, writing a speech takes time. It's usually fun, but I have found over the last term that occasionally, with assemblies to record as well, one feels uninspired for material. It's not a good feeling. The thought occurred to me today that I might have to give a speech about giving a speech, a kind of meta speech about the agonies of it all. But today, the final day of the school year, it's all about time. And so in fact is education more widely. We have a unique opportunity at the end of a school year to stop time altogether just for a day and simply to be, to live in the present to look around us and to be thankful for what we have right now. So please enjoy it. The world really is a wonderful place. But it is also about both reflection and looking forward. 
Education, in its literal sense, means a drawing out. It implies that something is already born naturally inside us, which will develop in the present and serve us in the future. Or, to look at it another way, as Michelangelo was supposed to have said, I did not create David, he was already there inside the stone. So, how have we filled our time this year? Two very exciting things happened when we returned in September. First, our nursery, now rebranded as Pelicans, opened its doors for 46 weeks of the year, offering wraparound care from 7 till 7 for busy parents. Before long, we had gone from a nursery consisting of a handful of children to one with 20 regular attendees. The other exciting development turned out to be one of the luckiest decisions in the history of the school. The previous year, we had trialled the use of one-to-one -one iPads in Year 8. The school Wi-Fi, and indeed the teachers, all seemed to be able to cope very well. So we rolled their use down to Year 6 from September. This decision meant that when the schools were instructed to close their doors, our online learning was already pretty much in place, with pupils adept users of technology and each with their own device. A quick lesson on how to use Microsoft Teams for pupils and teachers meant that we were able to roll out an effective remote learning programme. It was not, of course, without its bumps along the way, but I am in no doubt that their use in school was instrumental in ensuring our pupils continued to make excellent progress when learning at home. I was very much looking forward to this year. The general understanding amongst heads is that the first year in a new school is spent firefighting, the second year is the one where you can start to make changes, and the third year is the one where you can start to relax and enjoy yourself. The Michaelmas term itself was fairly straightforward. The usual events took place and the school year seemed to be going very well indeed, without incidents or disruptions. I remember celebrating the new year with friends, and really looking forward to the challenges and joy that 2020 would undoubtedly bring and the exciting plans we had for the Lent and summer terms, oblivious to what was about to unfold. By March, things had started to go pear-shaped. Schools were still not quite sure what was going to happen, but the uncertainty was the most unnerving. By mid-March, fewer and fewer children were coming into school Parents fearing that cough might be some, the start of something more sinister. Doesn't that seem like a long time ago now? How little we knew back then. And then we were told that we must close, remaining open only for the children of key workers. So we did. For 13 consecutive weeks, closing only for half term in May, and then reopening to Pelicans, Reception, Year 1 and Year 6 on the 1st of June, Years 2, 3, 4 and 5 on the 21st of June, and finally on the 29th of June, we were able to welcome back our Year 7 and 8 pupils. As Charles Swindle once said, life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. If we are all to be judged on that 90%, I would say that we can be very proud of ourselves. The way our community responded is something I will never forget. Since then, we have delivered 2,500 online lessons, and that doesn't count those music lessons taught by our visiting music teachers. I have personally written 30,000 words of literature concerning COVID-19. So on to year eight, my amusing, thought-provoking, intriguing, sometimes challenging year eight. You have all achieved so much this year and we are all very proud of every single one of you. It was very strange hand delivering your common entrance certificates this year, but I didn't want you to miss out on being told your results in person, just as previous years have. Bon voyage and please come back to tell us how you are getting on in your new schools. You're all amazing and you've all really taken on board living your lives, whether consciously or unconsciously, by the PSB core skills. I wanted to say a few words about each of you because you know I like embarrassing you, but also 
I want you to know how we will remember you. Amelie, you have impressed everyone since your arrival at Prebendal. Your level-headedness, calmness and common sense has earned you the respect of both staff and pupils. Thank you for being such a reliable deputy head girl and head of strings. It turns out that Amelie has an encyclopedic knowledge of music in the charts and regularly educates the other children on what they are and should be listening to. Many congratulations on your scholarship success, Amelie. Will. Your sense of humour was encapsulated perfectly in Thursday night's performance at the summer concert. If you haven't seen it, go and watch it. You've been a superb head chorister, head of brass, captain of boys hockey, and your scholarship to your senior school is very well deserved indeed. Will has a penchant for slipping in cheeky unrehearsed ornaments into Mozart mass movements. Mr Pilgrim remembers one trill in particular that raised Mr Harrison's eyebrows so high he thought it would come clean off. Good luck, Will. Kobe, musician, sportsman, academic. You are a real all-rounder. Captain of rugby, head of woodwind, digital leader, house captain of Sefrid. Twisting maths competitions to clean Mr Allday out of chocolate bars. How could one child eat that many boost bars? Your homemade cape in yesterday's colour run was hysterical and summed you up. Good luck, Kobe. You have a bright future ahead of you and congratulations on your scholarship success. Luca, head boy. Luca has a very dry sense of humour, one that adults can easily relate to. On the surface, he can be quiet, but then he will bowl a one-liner straight at you. He has been a calm and sensible voice of reason in his leadership role this year, and I know he will go on to great things. Good luck, Luca. Shamara, head girl, captain of netball, head of chamber music. You found yourself in the enviable position of being awarded two scholarships to two different schools. You're a gifted sportswoman, and I know you will go far. Many congratulations for all your achievements and I wish you the very best in the future. Jess, senior boarder and house captain for Luffer, captain of girls hockey. Jess has played a valuable role in all areas of school life, whether it be in the boarding house, in concerts or on the sports field. Jess, your scholarship success was very well deserved. Good luck. Ted. Senior chorister, house captain for Sherbourne. Ted was one of the first pupils I met when I started at Prebendal three years ago, standing out because he played the recorder. Any of the times he's laughed so hard he fell over, which happens a lot, are all worthy of a notable mention. We normally have to leave him for a minute or two to recover. I particularly enjoyed my hose fight with him during the colour run yesterday, which I won, of course. Good luck, Ted. Congratulations on your scholarship. Harry, deputy head boy. Getting away with borrowing a rainbow belt in year six by running really very fast in the other direction. Yes, Harry, I do know about that. Mr Munt had a funny anecdote about you. He noticed that Harry was slipping and sliding about on the muddy rugby pitch in mid-January during the warm-up. And just before the match started, Mr Munt saw that Harry was wearing his trainers instead of his boots. He explained that he had left them at home. Knowing the importance of Harry to the team, Mr Munt asked him what size he was to see if a pair of boots could be found. When he said size 10, Mr Munt was delighted as that was the very same size of boots that he was wearing. They quickly swapped footwear and Harry went on to put in a star performance. Meanwhile, Mr Munt spent the match slipping and sliding around the pitch, attempting to referee. Good luck, Harry. Jack, captain of football. Playing in the Scholars Concert in Portsmouth and slowing down the slide in the acrobat with the sole intention of causing Mr Richardson to get the accompaniment wrong. It worked. Many congratulations on your scholarship success and good luck at your senior school. Catherine, head of chamber choir, 
Neville House Captain. One of my favourite memories of you, Catherine, is singing comedy versions of Poor Wandering One with Mr Pilgrim and me. And then being overheard by the pair of us discussing the quality of our performances in a local restaurant. You have been an amazing musician this year, singing for an awful lot of our assemblies. Your music scholarship is very well deserved. Good luck. Thank you to staff for all you have done this year. The mountain we have climbed really has been a team effort, but we've made it to the top. I wish all our families a restful summer holiday. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our prize giving ceremony of 2020. We've never had one quite like this before, and hopefully we won't have one like it again. We have worked very hard to make sure it is as close as possible to the real ceremony. I'd be really proud of all of you this year. Um, you've been thrown into an extraordinary set of circumstances and I'm amazed to see how you've all adapted and coped uh, with such a very different way of, wor of working. So really any achievement that you have made this year has been even more of an achievement than it would have been under normal circumstances. So without further ado, we are going to go on to the form prizes. So we're going to start in the pre-prep. I'm going to start with nursery. So nursery, get ready. Can I hear you all nursery? Can I have a cheer? Right then, pelicans. Uh, the Miss Gardner Memorial Plate. Uh, goes to Isla and the Habershon Cup for Progress goes to Ida. Well done. <laughs> now moving on to reception. Uh, the Reception Cup for Achievement goes to Florence and the Reception Cup for Effort goes to Mila. Well done you two. Now moving on to year one. The year one cup for achievement goes to Beatrice and the year one cup for progress goes to James. Well done. <laughs> year two. The Shoesmith Cup for academic work in year two goes to Iton and the Green Oil Award for effort in year two goes to Henrietta. then. Year three. Um, so for years three to seven there is one prize for attainment and two prizes for effort. In 3A the prize for attainment goes to Grace and for effort Annabelle and Joshua. And for year four, attainment, Myla and effort, Luca and Ale. Five G, attainment, honor, and effort, Nicholas and Elsie. By J, the award for attainment goes to Florence and for effort, Libby and Emerson. <laughs> Moving on now to year six, 6AT uh, for attainment, Isaac and for effort, Tilly W and Evie. The prize for attainment goes to Inigo and for effort, Emma and Alex. Year seven, for attainment, 
Mark, and for effort, Len and Daisy. Seven S. The prize for attainment <coughs> goes to Bella, and for effort, Tom and Taya Mimi. <coughs> and so three very important cups. The Prebendal Cup for the pre prep uh, goes to Saskia in year two. The Shingler Cup for progress in year two goes to Sarah. And the UAT Progress Cup goes to Indigo in Year 7. Well done, you three. So now we move on to the Year 8 prizes. So the prizes for Year 8. English and Latin, Amelie. French, William, and Mathematics, Kobe. Science, Catherine, Religious Studies, Jack, and ICT, Ted. Geography, Luca, and History, Harry. The Carnegie Award for Drama goes to Catherine. The Kennett Cup for Speech and Drama goes to Indigo. The Simon Brett Prize for Fiction and the Tyson Fine Art Cup both go to Amelie. The Kiddle Plate for Steadfast Leadership and Sportsmanship, Kobe. And the Summit Trophies go to Shamara and Jessica. And the individual awards, uh, these are for, um, these four are for year eight. The Guild Cup for the best all-round sportsman goes to Harry. The Montgomery Cup for best all-round sportswoman, Shamara. The Raven Cup for good sportsmanship, Luca. And the Eitel Cup for senior girls cricket, Jessica. The Morrison Plate for Girls Under 11 Sport, Melissa in Year 6. The Cup for the Most Improved Under 11 Player goes to James in Year 6. And the Paul Plate for Sporting Endeavour goes to William in Year 8. We now move to the, uh, some music awards. The Jerwood Prize for Brass is William in Year 8. The Bishop Cup for Strings, Amelie in Year 8, and the Prebendal Cup for Woodwind, Kobe in Year 8. <laughs> the Woodgate Prize for Piano goes to Harrison in Year 7, and the Prebendal Prize for Singing to Catherine in Year 8. The Music Cup goes to Conrad. Uh, the Intermediate Music Shield uh, goes to James P in Year 6. The Senior Music Shield goes to Kobe in Year 8 and Ben in Year 7. And the Blake Drama Cup goes to Dolly in Year 6. <laughs> now we return to some pre-prep prizes. The Helper and Cup for the Best All-Rounder goes to Luca in Year 2. The Lawson Paul Cup for English to Aaron in Year 1. The Reading Progress Cup, Poppy in Year 2. The Pair in Mathematics Cup, Charlie in Year 1. The Science Cup, Jasper in Year 2. The History Cup goes to Hugh in Year 1. The Gillison Cup for Art goes to Charlotte in Year 2. And the Toby Grimwood Memorial Music Cup goes to Jasper in Year 2. <laughs> the Individual House Points Cup goes to Indigo in Year 7. The Lock Cup for Endeavour 
goes to Ben in year seven. The Drake Talbot Cup for Endeavour goes to Catherine in year eight. And the Jackson Pre Prep Cup for Endeavour goes to Jamie in year one. The Clifford Brown Cup for Good Behaviour goes to Millie in year one. The Pre Prep Character Cup goes to Samuel in year one. The Sheldon Citizenship Cup goes to Esther in year one. And the Tilia Cup for general knowledge goes to Louis in reception. Now, the next one is a very special award. It is for, for charity, for raising money for some of our um, most needy. The Ockenden Cup for charity work, uh, for their work for the Four Streets Project, Emily, Jessica, Shamara and Catherine. <laughs> the Cover Proficiency Cup goes to Kobe. The Cunningham Shield for Good Citizenship goes to Indigo. The Contribution to Cathedral Life Awards go to William and Ted. Um, for their hard work in the cathedral, let's give all of them a round of applause as well. <laughs> now, all of those prizes are decided by your teachers. Um, they see what you're doing day to day in the classroom and the sort of things that you're, you're doing um, in various subjects and how hard you're working, how hard you're trying and the sort of achievements you're making. This last prize is the Heads Prize, which is the only one that I get to award. It's always very difficult to choose one person in the school that I think has really gone the extra mile. And there can be lots of reasons why somebody gets the head prize. This year, the prize is going to somebody who is a very, very good role model to everyone in the school, whether they're in the pre-prep, the middle of the school, or at the top end. They are a good friend. They are always very fair. They are always very honest. In fact, this person exhibits all the skills and uh, all the characteristics that we would expect a prebendal pupil to have. So this year, the Heads Prize goes to Amelie. It's very about him. But very well deserved, Amelie. So now we move on to appointments for next year and the outcome of the house competitions. The house cup in reverse order for all the various house competitions we've had over the year, of course, very few since, uh, since March. Um, in fourth place, very well done to Luffer. Congratulations, Sherbourne. <laughs> Dramatic pause. In second place, Sefrid. <laughs> Which means in first place, a very well deserved win for Neville. Congratulations. <laughs> for the year 2020 to 2021. Now we're not exactly sure what sport is going to look like yet, but we are carrying on regardless. Captain of netball will be Daisy. <laughs> Who I can hear from the next room. The captain of football will be Len. And the captain of Girls Hockey will be Indigo. <laughs> Moving on to some musical appointments. Head of Woodwind, Taya Mimi. <laughs> Head of Brass, Ben. Harrison. Woo! Play the music, Len. 
Ben. Head on chamber choir, Indigo. And Kevin Drama, Tom. The digital technology leaders will be Harrison and Scarlett. The head of equal opportunities and charities will be Bella. And our senior boarder, Harrison. Moving on now to the house captains for next year. The head of Luffer will be Anna. <laughs> the head of Neville will be Henry. <laughs> head of Sefrid, Mark. And head of Sherbourne, Finley. Now, the moment I know some of you have been waiting for for a long time, I've talked in the last couple of years about changing the posts of head boy and head girl to head, head of school's role. And this gives us a little bit more flexibility uh, if we are going to be having um, maybe a year group where we think that there are two girls who should be heads of school or two boys who are going to be heads of school or maybe just one head of school. Um, it just means that I can make sure that the most deserving candidates get that role. This year I have appointed two heads of school. There are no deputy roles, but there are two heads of school. The heads of school for next year are Indigo and Tom. Um, that was very well deserved. It was a very difficult decision. You're a very strong year group. And if you are as strong as the current year eights who have been absolutely brilliant, even with so much difficulty over the last few months, um, then you will be a really excellent year group and a role model for everyone else. Thank you so much to all the staff for their hard work um, in putting together the recipients of these prizes and for making sure that we have chosen the right people. You've all done very well, you've all worked very hard and we are proud of every single one of you. Um, so thank you very much for coming along to our Zoom prize giving. I think everyone deserves one last round of applause. Wow, what a year, right? Nearly a whole school year has been ruined by just one virus. The only good thing about this is we will tell the history to our children. I am Shamara, as most of you know, and I have been head girl for the last year, well, half a year. I started from Burndall halfway through year two and it's been quite a ride. I have enjoyed all my classes and all the help from the teachers, staff, friends. Ladies and gentlemen, I have been at Burndall School from the age of three. I started in Northgate House in 2010 in kindergarten. I recall a time before social distancing where we walked hand in hand down North Street to the cathedral. It seemed like such a long way. I remember walking through the snow in my shorts, oblivious to the cold and the world around me. Over the years, I started to get the hang of it, learning to wing it, scrape by and occasionally excel. However, I still don't know what quadrivium is. I realise I've been at Provendal now longer than most of the teachers. As Miss Salmon Smith would say, wow. Provendal has slowly changed, but this year things have really changed. I have learned new language, COVID talk, pods, bubbles, shielding, and as many of the teachers would know, furlough. Managing the 
Managing boredom was a skill I had already mastered. Let's just say, like my home haircut, year eight has been cut a bit short. But sometimes, short is sweet. Who knew you could study science in bed, do maths in your PJs, and raid the biscuit jar in lessons? After nearly 10 years at Pabendal and one term after a duvet, I now feel ready to move on. Sometimes I won't forget there's been a lot of dressing up, racing with Will and Sid in the glamorous granny race, in the nativity, someone chose me, the skinny kid, to be the fat stoneman. They had to take two pillows to make me look the part. I've danced on the stage in a swimming hat, being a singing lion who forgot a few lines, and a timid mole with a very low voice. I won't forget the fun of the mud run on our bristle tip, or laughing at the squawking parrot on the French trip. I won't forget our unbeaten rugby season, with Cove and Harry running through everyone, some hard tackles, and Will kicking us to glory. I also won't forget Jack captaining the fabulous football team. We had such a strong forward, Ted and I could chat in defence. Catherine coming out on our last match to set up an assist to seal the game, cheered on by Jess, Emily and Tamara. I feel my year eight has come a long way. Whatever may have happened this term, we have adapted. Though my time at Pabendal is coming to a close, at least we get to leave in style. The colour on is on. to worship you in spirit and in truth, that our consciences may be quickened by your holiness, 
our minds nourished by your truth, our imaginations purified by your beauty, our hearts opened to your love, our wills surrendered to your purpose. May all this be gathered up in, in adoration as we ascribe glory, praise and honour to you alone, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Oxen and the Lion Once there were four oxen, a type of cattle, who lived together in a field. They were very good friends. Each day a hungry lion came to the field to try and trick one of them into jumping out of the field and walking to his cave where he could eat them because they would be too heavy to carry. However, the oxen were clever. Every day, when the lion came, they stood together with their tails to each other. This way, their horns faced outwards, and they could defend themselves on all sides when he approached them. Despite their ingenious methods, one day they argued with each other. They were so angry they forgot about the lion, and each went to stand in a different corner of the field. They ignored each other, and pretended that they weren't there. Unfortunately, the lion soon came, and when he found the oxen separated, he was very happy. One by one, he tricked them into following him, and soon the field was empty, because none of them had noticed the others leaving. But the lion told the fourth when they reached his cave, If you had stayed together, I couldn't have managed to trick all of you. But now I have, because you didn't stick together, so I got you all one by one. United, you could have stood. Divided, you fell. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Prebendal School, for the privilege of being part of this beautiful school community, for the individual care and attention we receive here, for the talents and gifts that are honed here, for the manners, social skills and life skills taught here, for the opportunity to develop as human beings, to be kind, thoughtful and caring, for times of great discovery and learning, for friendships that have grown, for laughter, fun and food, and for the happy memories we take away with us at the end of this academic year. Thank you for watching over us, for keeping us safe from the coronavirus pandemic and for all the blessings you have given to us. We pray for the staff, parents and governors, and for all who have imparted their wisdom, energy and skills to teach and mentor us. As this chapter of our life closes, so a new one begins. May we enjoy rest and relaxation over the summer holidays. Fill our minds with your thoughts. Fill our bodies with your strength. Fill our souls with your dreams. Fill our hearts with your love that we might return to our studies after the summer, full of energy and excitement about what you have in store for us, so that we might grow to love and serve you all the days of our lives. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. And so we pray together the Lord's Prayer, as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us now and evermore. Amen.
eternal God and Father, help us to entrust the past to your mercy, the present to your love, and the future to your wisdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.